Okay, thank you so much. So in the last decade, we've seen significant research interest on bringing the theory of probabilistic proofs to practice in the form of built systems. Uh, and even in the last two or three years, that interest has spread to the broader tech community, especially uh, in the cryptocurrency space. So I'm gonna tell you about the work that my co-authors and I did on designing a new kind of ZK snark, but I'm also gonna try and give you a more general picture of the research area. To start, let's dissect this jargon. What, what is a ZK snark? Well, so it's an argument, which is to say it's a proof, but it depends on a cryptographic assumption. And further, it's an argument of knowledge. That means, essentially, you can use it to prove that you know a secret. And since it's zero knowledge, when you prove that you know a secret, you don't reveal anything about that secret. Now, it's also succinct, which means that it's short, and it's non-interactive, meaning that you'll be convinced even if you don't have a conversation. It can just be written down. And finally, we're gonna restrict ourselves to talking about publicly verifiable proofs, which means that anyone who reads the proof uh, can be convinced that it's true. Uh, so when we talk, compare different kinds of ZK snarks, there's at least five questions that we can ask. One is, how big is the proof? We said it was small, but maybe some ZK snarks have smaller proofs than others. And another question is, how much time does it take the prover to write down the proof? And how much time does it take the verifier to check it? Now, uh, just note that this, the script P and script V are the prover and verifier. I'm gonna use those throughout the talk. So the prover generates the proof, the verifier checks it. Um, and the other thing to note is I, we can talk about asymptotic proof size and verifier time and prover time, but since we're interested in building systems, we should also keep in our heads that we wanna worry about the concrete costs too. Also remember, that since this is an argument, we have to make some cryptographic assumption and different ZK snarks make different assumptions and maybe we believe one and not another. And finally, some ZK snarks, including the, the ones that are most widely deployed today, require a trusted setup. That, that's some expensive one-time computation and you can only believe that a proof is valid if you trust the person who ran that one-time computation. So you can see that there's a lot of variables here and it, it sort of implies a big design space. Every kind of ZK snark kind of gives a different mix of these properties. The, the ZK snark my co-authors and I designed, we call it Hyrax, and it represents a new point in this space. Hyrax proves the satisfiability of arithmetic circuits, and I'll define in detail what I mean later, but for now imagine that there's some computation C, and the prover convinces the verifier that it knows a secret W, which we'll call the witness, that makes that computation output true. Now, for efficiency, Hyrax also requires this computation to have some kind of repetitive structure. In the common case, it'll be made up of repeated copies of the same subcomputation. Now, in terms of the five costs that we just saw, Hyrax has proofs that are asymptotically short, its prover is asymptotically optimal, and the verifier's work is asymptotically less than just running the computation. Uh, and remember, we also care about concreteness, so uh, the good news is, as we'll see later, the concrete costs are good. And finally, Hyrax relies on a standard assumption, the discrete log assumption, and it doesn't require any trusted setup. So we did a careful comparison with five other zero-knowledge proof systems. We'll take a look at detailed results later, but the upshot is that Hyrax gives small proofs in the sense that if you wanted to make the proof smaller, you'd have to choose a different system and it, you'd pay for it by making the verifier or prover slower. And it also gives fast proofs in, in the sense that if you wanted to make the proofs faster, you'd have to choose a different system and that you'd pay for it by making the proofs bigger. Now, this is a big design space and you might say, well, which one's the best? Well, the answer is there isn't a best one because it's really not a competition. What we're trying to do is figure out for a given application, which proof system is best. And it's important to consider the whole space and pick the one that's best for your application. So let's kind of try and do that a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about this design space of general purpose zero knowledge proof systems, and then later we'll come back and look at higher access design and some evaluation results. So when we talk about general purpose proof systems, usually what we mean are proof systems for NP languages. That means there's some relation phi that's just basically a computation that takes two values and returns true or false. The values are an input X from the verifier and a secret witness, W, from the prover. And phi is a computation that's going to check whether the witness is somehow correct in the, in the sense that it corresponds to the verifier's input. Now, at a really high level, these systems all operate by turning computations, this computation phi, into two new computations, one for the verifier and one for the prover. 
And just like in the last talk, we're gonna think about this as happening in two stages, which we'll call the front end and the back end. Now in the front end, we convert the computation phi into an arithmetic circuit, which is to say a generalized Boolean circuit where and becomes multiplication and or becomes addition and the wires take values from a finite field. And now the front end constructs this arithmetic circuit in a particular way, such that the satisfaction of the arithmetic circuit is tantamount to correct execution of the computation phi. Then in the back end, we apply proving machinery, which is some combination of complexity theoretic and cryptographic objects, to produce a prover and verifier computation with the following properties. A valid proof establishes satisfaction of the arithmetic circuit. And then because of the way we constructed the arithmetic circuit, that further guarantees correct execution of the computation phi. So up to this point, I've talked about, well, there's a design space and there's many different zero knowledge proofs. And really what I'm referring to fundamentally is this machinery, is this back end. So let's take a look at some of the existing back ends. So maybe the most well-known zero knowledge proof systems are Pinocchio and Libsnark. These are used essentially in, in Zcash. Now these are built on linear probabilistically checkable proofs and very roughly speaking, they give short proofs and fast verification, but proving is slow, they rely on non-standard cryptographic assumptions and they require a trusted setup. Now the bulletproof system, which was presented a couple days ago here, builds on a different, you could think about it as a linear PCP. Bulletproofs also give short proofs, but unlike LibSnark, it relies on a standard cryptographic assumption and doesn't require any trusted setup. The cost is that both proving and verifying are pretty slow. Now an entirely different class of proving machinery comes from multi-party computation in the head due to Ishai et al. Now, the first couple implementations of this were ZKBoo and ZKD++, and they have fast proving, they build on a standard cryptographic assumption, and they have no trusted setup. But they give long proofs, and verifying is at least asymptotically expensive. More recently, Lakero improves on the MPC in the head approach, and it gives asymptotically shorter proofs and concretely faster verification. And finally, there's a third class of machinery that builds on short PCPs, and Libstark is currently the only practical implementation of this approach. It gives asymptotically short proofs and fast verification, and it needs no trusted setup. But proving is slow, and its performance relies crucially on an unproven conjecture about the hard episode of a certain problem related to Reed Solomon codes. So this table, it's not gospel, it's just a rough approximation of the state of play, but the important point to take away is that all these systems give slightly different properties and none is clearly the best one. So with this sort of landscape in mind, let's take a quick look at Hyrax's machinery and how it fits in. So Hyrax is built on interactive proofs, which are essentially probabilistic cross-examinations. We make these interactive proofs zero knowledge using techniques of Ben Orr et al and da Kramer and Damgard. But as we'll see, if we just naively ap ap uh, apply those techniques, we get poor performance. So Hyrax also includes several refinements, which result in orders of magnitude improvement in verifier time and proof size, and also concrete sort of constant factor savings in prover time. The high level idea in Hyrax is to take an interactive proof and replace the prover's messages with commitments to those messages. Then the prover helps the verifier to check the messages hidden inside the commitments with the result that the verifier is convinced of the proof without ever seeing the messages. Just as a reminder, a cryptographic commitment um, has a sender who computes a commitment to a message and sends the commitment to a receiver. Later, the sender can open the commitment and reveal the message inside, and the receiver will be convinced that what the sender revealed was indeed what he initially put into the commitment. Now, these schemes have two properties. First, they hide, which means the commitment doesn't reveal anything to the receiver about the message. And second, they bind, which means the sender can't lie about what it put into the commitment. Hyrax uses a special kind of commitment that has a third property, a linear homomorphism. This means that there's an operator that takes two commitments and produces a new commitment to their sum, to the sum of the messages inside. This also, you'll note, allows scaling of commitments. To multiply by k, we just add k copies together. In particular, Hyrax builds on Peterson commitments, which have this property. 
So Hyrax also builds on the interactive proof line that started with Goldwasser, Kalai, and Rothblum, the Muggles line. This is an interactive proof for layered arithmetic circuit evaluation, where by layered I mean there's a set of inputs that feed one set of gates, whose outputs feed a second set, et cetera, and we can turn any arithmetic circuit into a layered arithmetic circuit. So to start the proof, the verifier gives the, some inputs to the prover, and then the prover evaluates the arithmetic circuit to produce some output, that we'll call Y, that it returns to the verifier. Now it's time for interaction. So first, the verifier constructs a polynomial that re relates the purported output, Y, to the last layer of gates in the circuit. Then it engages the prover in a sum check, that's a kind of interactive proof, over that polynomial, which reduces the purported outputs to a claim about the second last layer of the circuit. To check that claim, the verifier engages the prover in another sum check, which reduces the claim about the second last layer to a claim about the third last layer. And you can see how we iterate this until the verifier is now holding a, a, a claim whose truth is just related to the inputs to the computation. Now, if this weren't a zero knowledge proof, we'd be done because the verifier would just check that. But remember, um, we're, we're trying to build a zero knowledge proof, so we have to make two changes. First, the prover, as I said earlier, is going to send commitments rather than its messages. And second, we're going to give, need to give the verifier some way to check that final statement about the inputs to the arithmetic circuit, because those include the witness which the verifier should never see. Okay, so let's see how that goes. Um, the verifier's final check, we're gonna concentrate on that. It's a, essentially a polynomial evaluation. We're gonna call that polynomial M tilde, and it basically it encodes both the input X and the witness W. Now to run the check, the prover and the verifier are going to use what's called a polynomial commitment scheme. Here's how that works. At the start of the protocol, the prover is gonna commit to M tilde using a construction we'll see soon. Then the prover and the verifier run the interactive proof we just saw, and at the end, the prover sends a claimed evaluation of M tilde at the point that the verifier chooses. And finally, using the polynomial commitment, the, it, he proves to the verifier that the evaluation is consistent with the initial commitment to M tilde. So Hyrax uses a new commitment scheme for multilinear polynomials uh, like M tilde, and I'll, I'll show you approximately how that works. So multilinear polynomials like M tilde have a specific form. Namely, we can think about them as a vector matrix vector product, where the vectors L and R are depending on the point at which we evaluate the polynomial, and the, vector, and the matrix T encodes the monomials of M tilde. So in the case of our protocol, the matrix T encodes the witness W. And we can think about it as also encoding the input, but for simplicity, we'll concentrate on the witness. So a naive approach would be to build a polynomial commitment scheme on individual commitments. So the prover sends a commitment to each element of the matrix T, and then the verifier can use the linear homomorphism in the commitment scheme to compute the vector matrix vector product. But this is inefficient because the commitment size and the time to evaluate the commitment are both linear in the size of the witness, which is no good. So to sidestep this problem, we're gonna follow an idea due to Jens Krupp, which is to use multi-commitments to each row of the matrix. So a multi-commitment encodes a vector of messages rather than a single message. And using the Peterson commitment, we can build multi-commitments that additionally have a vector-wise homomorphism. So when we add two commitments together, what we get is a sum of the committed vectors. Okay, so in, then how does it proceed? First, the verifier is gonna compute the vector matrix product L times T using the vector-wise homomorphism. The result is a commitment to a single vector. And then the prover sends a commitment to a claimed evaluation of M tilde. And finally, the prover uses a dot product argument to convince the verifier that that claimed evaluation is consistent with the vector R and the vector matrix product L times T that the, that the verifier previously computed. In Hyrex, we use a dot product argument that we adapted from bulletproofs, and it, it has very small cost. It's just logarithmic in the length of the R vector for communication. So if the matrix T is square, then the prover sends one commitment per row and a logarithmic number of commitments for, per number of columns. So that's sort of square rootish in total. And the verifier's computation is proportional to the sum of the matrix dimensions. So again, it's sort of square rootish in total. Alternatively, we can adjust the matrix dimensions to trade extra verifier work for lower proof size, which means you can tailor Hyrax to your particular application to some extent. Okay, so I've described everything in terms of an interactive proof, and all of the interactive proofs are public coins, so we can make them non-interactive using the Fiat-Shamir heuristic. 
And then we give several other refinements in the paper. First, we use multi-commitments to say proof size and verifier work in the sum check invocations. Second, we develop what we call a redistribution layer, which lets Hyrax extract parallelism from serial computations. And finally, we tweak the giraffe interactive proof, which is prior work, to further reduce the proof size. So we've seen a little bit about how Hyrax works. Let's see a, some, something about how it performs. So our points of comparison are five existing zero-knowledge proof systems that don't require trusted setup. These are BCCGP square root, Bulletproofs, ZKB++, Lihero, and Libstark. We re-implemented BCCGP and uh, square root and Bulletproofs to use the same elliptic curve as Hyrax. The other three don't use elliptic curves, so we just used the author's implementations. We're also gonna look at two different versions of Hyrax. One that uses all of our refinements, and in that version, we're gonna set the dimensions of the matrix T so that the number of columns is the square of the number of rows. So we're gonna have a little more verifier work and lower communication. And the other version of Hyrax, which we call Hyrax Naive, doesn't include any of the refinements from the paper. Okay, so we're gonna compare these systems at about 90-bit security using, um, for the systems that use elliptic curves, the M191 elliptic curve from Arana et al. And the benchmark I'm gonna show you is SHA-256 Merkle trees, where the prover convinces the verifier that it knows all of the leaves of a hash tree corresponding to a root that the verifier holds. Okay, so this graph shows proof size versus log of the number of leaves in the hash tree. The green dots are Hyrax, which has sort of the second best proof size for most of the computation range there. And you can see that Bulletproofs, the magenta triangles, gives the very best proof size. Meanwhile, ZKBoo, the red squares, has quite large proofs. Even worse is the naive version of Hyrax, the blue stars. You can see that the difference between the blue stars and the green dots, that's the result of our refinements. So how about prover time? Again, let's look versus log of the tree size. So remember ZKB++ had the biggest proofs, but now we see it also has by far the fastest prover. Lakero's prover, that's the orange diamonds, it's also quite fast, and then Hyrax sort of is in the middle of the pack. Now remember, Bulletproofs had very small proofs, but on the other hand, it has nearly the longest proof time, up there almost with Libstark. And finally, you can see Hyrax's refinements save sort of the factor of three. Finally, let's look at verifier time. Here, Libstark has the best performance, and Likero has a strong showing too. Now, for big enough problems, Hyrax is faster than ZKB++, which is what we expect, because asymptotically, ZKB++ is more expensive. And once again, we can see Hyrax naive, that's the blue stars, much, much worse than the refined version of Hyrax. Okay, so let's wrap up. I've shown you Hyrax, which is a new general purpose zero-knowledge uh, zero snark. And as we saw, Hyrax gives small proofs in the sense that if you wanted them to be smaller, you'd have to switch to a different system with worse performance in terms of verifier and prover time. And Hyrax is fast in the sense that if you want them to be faster, you have to switch to a different proof system with worse performance in terms of proof size. But again, the most important takeaway here is there's no real winner among these systems. We're not having a competition. We're just trying to match the proof system to our application. And for that, you should shop carefully to find the one that matches yours. So from that perspective, we regard Hyrax as a point in the design space that will be useful, and we hope that we will continue to be able to improve sort of all of these systems and really push this area forward. Uh, as a note, an extended version of the paper and our code are available online. I hope you'll check them out. And with that, I'm happy to take questions. Hi. Uh, when you were talking about the efficiency of the prover, you had marked things as efficient and non-efficient. Can mm -hmm. you be a bit more specific? Like in terms of what are the asymptotic or the concrete operations that you are counting and what, what's efficient and non-efficient? Oh, sure, absolutely, yeah. So uh, thank you very much for the question. So the question is, um, when we talk about the prover efficiency, is it efficiency in the, uh, the theory sense or efficiency in the concrete sense? I was trying to capture more the concrete sense of things. Um, so uh, most of those systems will have at most a logarithmic overhead, but for example, ZKB++ had one of the slowest provers, but, it, or sorry, ZKB++ had, um, yeah, well, let's, let's just go back to it. Um, so ZKB++ had a very fast prover, even though asymptotically it's, uh, it's linear. In the case of uh, another case that's asymptotically linear is bulletproofs. 
one of the slowest provers. So we can't just concentrate on the, on the asymptotics, and so what I was trying to capture there really was the concrete costs. So when I said slower, I meant concretely it's gonna take you five minutes to construct the proof versus 30 seconds. So your yeah. prover is linear in the circuit size? Uh, our prover is linear, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have time for one more quick question. Uh, for your investment plan, so can you tell us something about what happens offline? What, what's the part of the computation you have to do offline? Ah, so all of these systems in principle have no offline component at all. Um, in, in practice, uh, you know, anything that's, so there's no, co there's no trusted setup phase. Uh, for example, uh, but some of these, uh, are the ones that are using Peterson commitments, for example, need some kind of common reference string that can be randomly generated. So in terms of offline costs, essentially it's just pick some random elliptic curve points, and that can be done once, and people can verify that it was done essentially randomly. But other than that, there are no offline costs at all. Sides? Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, sides, offline sides, so it's off the string? Ah, it, it's, so if we have a, a multi-commitment of, of length n, then we need n random elliptic curve points, or n plus one, I suppose. All right, let's thank Riyadh again.